In our previous sessions, we have explored several mouse trail effects, but today's video is something special. Recently, while seeking fresh inspiration on awards, I stumbled upon a mouse trail animation that truly stands out from the crowd. This one follows your cursor around even when you scroll down the page without moving your mouse. This cool behavior presented a real challenge as in my knowledge, there is no straightforward method to track the cursor's position on scroll without actual mouse movement. Driven by curiosity, I managed to recreate this dope effect using just plain JavaScript. I tweaked the blend mode to make it look nicer, but you can easily get the original look with a couple of CSS changes. In today's video, I'll guide you through the steps to craft this extraordinary mouse trail animation. If you find the video helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Alright, let's get started with the video. For our HTML, we are just going to keep it really simple because we just need some stuff on the page for our animation to work with. So we'll start by making a container. In that container, we are going to put a navbar at the top, a couple of headers with images and some text sections we'll call copy. We don't need to worry too much about what we put in these sections. Just make sure there is enough there to let us scroll through the page. I'm going to add some simple text in the navbar and drop in images in the headers and image sections. We'll fill up the copy sections with some dummy text. Alright, that's all for the HTML. Now let's move on to adding some simple styles to make it look good. First, we zero out all margins and paddings and set box sizing to border box. Our page will have a full width and full height layout with a dark background and white text. We'll position our canvas absolutely to cover the entire screen, crucial for the mouse trail effect. Images will fill their containers without stretching thanks to object fit cover. Text elements like links and paragraphs are all uppercase, small and lightweight. Our container and navbar have some padding and are set to always stay visible as you scroll. We are using a cool effect with mix blend mode set to difference to make overlapping elements stand out. Next up, I'll define some basic styles to the navbar, header images and the copy. It's very much basic stuff, so I'll just fast forward this part. I'm also pasting some CSS from the Lanis documentation as I'll be adding smooth scrolling just for some better user experience. That wraps up our CSS. Before we start, just for an added touch, I'm including Lanis, a library for smooth scrolling. It's not essential for the mouse trail, but it enhances the scrolling experience on our page. We'll start by setting up a canvas where all our drawing will happen. First, we create a new canvas element and attach it to the body of our document. We then get its 2D rendering context which allows us to draw on the canvas. We need to make sure our canvas always matches the size of the window, so we set up a function called resize canvas. This function adjusts the canvas width and height to cover the entire browser window. Even as it changes size or as the content length varies due to dynamic content or browser resizing. Next, we define several variables to track and manage the mouse position and the effect of scrolling on the trail. X mouse position and Y mouse position variables store the current horizontal and vertical position of the mouse. They are updated every time the mouse moves, ensuring the trail follows the cursor accurately. Last scroll left and last scroll top help us keep track of the last scroll positions horizontally and vertically. This is crucial for adjusting the mouse trail when the user scrolls. By knowing how much the page has been scrolled since the last frame, we can calculate the new position of the trail accurately. 
last x and last y are initialized as null to indicate that there hasn't been a previous mouse position recorded yet. Then we define a flag to check if the mouse has moved for the first time. It prevents the drawing function from executing before the mouse actually moves. Then we set up a few properties on the canvas context to define how our mouse trail looks. We'll set the thickness of the trail line to 24 pixels. Choose a white color with some transparency for the trail. Make the line rounded. We'll also apply blur effect with a radius of 12 pixels. Then we define the draw line function that takes new x and y coordinates. If we have a last recorded position, it draws the line from the last position to the new position using the begin path, move to and line to functions. This is what creates the trail effect. Next, we need to add an event listener for the mouse movements. This allows us to track where the mouse is and draw the trail accordingly. When the mouse moves, we first check if it's the initial movement using the flag. If it's the first move, we update last x and last y variables with the current mouse position from page x and page y without drawing anything yet. This setup avoids starting the trail from a random point. Once that's set, we change the flag to true. For subsequent mouse movements, we update the x and y mouse positions with the new positions and call the draw line function to draw from the last recorded position to the new position, creating the visible trail. We also set up a listener for the scroll event. This is crucial for adjusting the trail when the page scrolls. We calculate the difference between the current scroll position and the last known scroll position, which is last scroll left and last scroll top. If there is a change, we adjust the mouse position of x and y by the delta values to align the trail with the new view and then draw the line. After updating, we reset the last scroll positions to the current ones for the next event. Lastly, we ensure our canvas resizes correctly when the window size changes by listening to the resize event. That's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.